So a Jorah spider is uh, a, a very, I guess you would call it a charismatic spider um, relative to spider terms. It's sort of like, I've always described them as a Nerf football with legs. So imagine like neon yellow Nerf football with the with like the gray stripes on top with just a bunch of black legs coming out from it. I, th I personally think they're incredibly interesting to look at. I was looking for a project to do and I you know it I've had these Jorah spiders outside of my house like just completely webbing up the entire tree attached to the front of my house and my porch and everything they are a sort of large-ish uh, spider that builds a very um, a very voluminous web uh, generally it's about a, a meter in diameter and they're about the size the largest female that I saw probably has a leg span about the size of my palm so I guess it's just kind of hard not to get interested in the big neon yellow spider that's just kind of in front of you all the time. So of all the Jorah spiders that lived in Southeastern Asia, only, you know, however many, let's say 10, 10 spiders were transported to Athens. Since then, it's sort of like a, an exponential growth thing. The spiders are just so common now because they've had eight years to build up their population. The reason we didn't notice them before is because there simply just weren't enough of them to notice. It's an exponential growth curve in that, you know, each spider is capable of producing two to three egg sacs uh, in a given season and each egg sac could have upwards of 500 eggs per spider. So that's um, upwards of maybe 1500 spiderlings per adult spider. So it's it's just sort of a, a thing where they just were flying under the radar for you know five or so years. And then in the last two years, we've, we've really noticed them because of how quickly that population just sort of exploded because of that exponential growth. An in, in invasive species is the non-native species that causes negative impact and in it's introduced range. And that negative impact can be ecological, it can be economic, it can be um, from a, a human perspective. So in this case, we are defining invasive species based on the idea that these spiders are an active nuisance to the citizens of, of, of Athens and that people people's lives are actively disrupted by the presence of the spiders and the numbers that they have. So as of now, we don't have any data to support um, the spiders showing any sort of negative ecological effect, but that is purely from lack of data. Um, it's really hard to say what their overall impact is going to be ecologically. So they, they're, they're, they're wusses uh, is, the, is the best term for that. When it comes to direct confrontation with another spider, the Jorah spider will always run away. So if another spider comes into the Jorah's web, the Jorah spider will just simply leave and build another web. And all spiders uh, have sort of like, or all Nephilid spiders, the orb weavers, they have a sort of like a fetal position response that they do to stress where they just sort of go back like this and like sit on their backs and just stay still. And with just one little puff of air, the Joros stayed in that position for over an hour. Um, so they, they're, they're, they're wusses. We actually do have very concrete data to suggest that the Joros spider is being preyed upon more by native bird species now and that a lot of native insecti insectivores are recognizing Joros as a very good food source, um, especially because of how evident they are, like how easy to see they are uh, in the environment. You've got this giant neon yellow spider just in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, that, that's a pretty tasty snack for a bird.
So they do provide sort of a resource benefit in that way. You probably will not notice the spiders until they are already very present um, in that there are probably places on the East Coast that don't know they have Jorah spiders right now, um, but will be rudely surprised this coming summer when a bunch of Jorah spiders show up out of nowhere. And that is not necessarily because the Jorah spiders just arrived there. It is because they have been there for several years and they've been building up their population numbers and they're just now noticeable. So it's entirely possible that the Jorah spiders are already anywhere on the East Coast and we, it, we're simply playing a waiting game until they explode in population numbers. Um, I cannot personally condone spider genocide. I personally feel that you shouldn't kill the spiders. It's hard to say because the effect is going to be the same regardless. Whether you kill the spiders or don't, they're still going to be there. They're still going to probably be a nuisance. 